Hello, welcome to Furious Tea Break, the behind the scenes, just chat to the camera about stuff that's going on with the channel, decisions that have been made, things that have done, stuff that's happened. And in this case, this being the opening first ever chat to the camera on Furious Tea Break, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about why Quentin had to die. I mean, be sold. Why Quentin had to be sold, because that's kind of part of a broader subject of selling project cars from a YouTube channel, because Everyone who watches the channel becomes kind of emotionally involved in the car, in the journey, I think storytellers like to call it, um, and become kind of attached to them, even perhaps even more than us, the car owners who have done all the work because we're sort of up close and personal with it. You're kind of following the story and everything and everyone feels a bit kind of emotionally invested in it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just a car. However, it does pose the eternal question, should, as a YouTuber, you actually sell the project cars that people have followed because they want to see more of it on the channel. But then you come back to the problem, what else am I doing with it? Am I just creating content for the sake of content or is there more to actually do? So I actually spent a little bit of time um, thinking about what were good reasons to keep and to sell uh, Quentin. And the first one really is that it's always worrying selling a popular um, content YouTube car because people love it and some people subscribe to your channel only because of that car they don't care when you put other stuff out they just want to see more of that particular one and so you're always worried that if you've got rid of that car they're going to want to subscribe and I actually watched the figures for the video when I changed Quentin for this Freelander and I took a note of how many subscribers I had at the beginning of the video when it went live and then half an hour later I looked back and it had gone down by four four people had unsubscribed during that video first few minutes because they were so angry, incensed, disenfranchised by the fact I'd sold the car. Um, over the last few days, it has actually risen up again. It's gone up again to a total net of, I think, 21 or 22 more subscribers have subscribed while they were watching that video. You can see the, the you can see how many people have subscribed and unsubscribed to the total um, channel on the front page, but then you go into the analytics of each video, and I can see that overall, I've had a gain of 21 new subscribers from people watching that video and this car coming on the fleet. I haven't actually checked back to see how many more people have actually unsubscribed. Um, because if knowing four people have un unsubscribed, it means that at least 25 people have subscribed if you take away that four from the, the 25. So I need to go back and check. <laughs> Is it even numbers? Is it uh, how many people have gone completely? So yeah, that was always the worry. And even, bigger channels, they all worry about this kind of thing because you know people get sucked into a particular car if you sell it, are they going to desert your channel and not want to watch anymore? I know a lot of people want to watch because of the overall content and the general everything else, but you know some people just want that one thing. So, from a, the, the standpoint of a, a business, which a YouTube channel sort of is in a way, then you are kind of mindful of this, upsetting your customers, which is a sad thing. Anyway, the reasons to keep it. Well, okay, first of all, it's very very popular. Um, secondly, it's a really good example of a really rare car. And I'm not gonna find another one as good without paying probably twice what I valued it at because the ones that I've seen previously going for sale at KGF and Stone Cold were in seven or 8,000 pounds, but they were low mileage cars in that kind of condition, but they'd never been restored. They were just as they were from the factory. So getting the kind of money I was hoping for for it wasn't unrealistic, but if I want to replace it again, I'm gonna to have to pay proper money or start again with another scrapper. However, as I've said multiple times, I'm not a huge fan of convertibles, so I probably wouldn't do it again on that particular kind of car. Um, and a few people did point out that, it, yes, it is going up in value, and I knew that. I know that all the Rover R8 series cars and R3s as well have been going up a lot in value as well, so as an investment, as a cheap investment at the moment, if you've got somewhere to keep it, it's worth hanging on to. But that does help come with a caveat got someone to have someone to keep it because that's one of those conversations everyone has down the pub oh my first car was a mark one escort i had an opal manta i had i know insert whatever is now a 20 30 or forty thousand pound car and you paid 500 quid for it back in 1980 if you'd sat on that mark one cortina or that lotus cortina you had all those years ago you could pay your mortgage off now which is great except in the meantime you'd have paid storage you've been renting a garage for 100 pounds a month for the last 40 years and so you'd have spent fifty thousand pounds in order to save your forty thousand pound car you know, okay, that's not accurate maths, I know that. But that you get the point. So yeah, it's gonna go up in value, absolutely. But I was having to pay storage on the thing. 
And so every month I was having to pay a few pounds just to keep the thing safe and dry. Which, so I've kind of run out of reasons to, to keep it because it was a really nice car, but I never wanted to drive it because of all the stuff I'm going to go over in a second. So first of all, yeah, I wanted to keep it pristine. Because I knew ultimately the car was going to be for sale, I always wanted to keep it absolutely spot on perfect, which meant hardly ever using it. I had to keep it indoors, under a cover. I couldn't just park it on the street around the corner like I can, can with this thing. So if, I, if this thing has to spend the night outside, on the drive, on the street, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Whereas with Quentin, because it's got that brand new perfect roof, I, I'm not happy with that. I, I'd be up all night pacing and looking out the window. Um, so yeah, that is the constant fear of the thing getting damaged because it's now so good. The paint is lovely. The roof is, is too good. That, the thing, when you've got a car with a couple of knocks on it, you can kind of relax a little bit because it's had that first knock and that car hadn't. And the first time the wheel gets curbed or a stone chip becomes, it's just going to be heartbreaking. It's just too much. And also with a convertible, every time you put the roof down, you do put a few little wrinkles in it and the, the back screen of ultimately will start to crease up. And I just wasn't happy to be, it's just too much. I, I, I couldn't relax with it. First of all, knowing it's going to get spoilt whilst I was using it. Second of all, spoilt and reducing the value of it, knowing it needs to be sold on at some point. Which is the other thing, of course, because I've got lots of money tied up in the thing. I think it cost me over £4,000 to get that car from dead to near perfection, which is not huge money because I was doing so much of it myself. But that's a lot of money to be tied up in something that I'm not using and is then costing me in order to keep it. And as well as the storage fees, you've got to keep MOTing it, you've got to keep servicing it. I mean, as it was, there was nothing to do with that car. I'd run out of jobs to do, so there's no more content to make on it. Unless something broke, which I didn't want it to break, um, it was just taking up space. And I'm really short on parking spaces, as you know. I'm Parking for me is a massive premium, and I am, I am over that premium already. Even with the new barn, I've already gone too far with the number of cars I've got because I've suddenly not got rid of Quentin completely by replacing it with the Freelander. The Crown Vic's arrived recently, the um, 200 VI's arrived recently. Uh, there's just too many cars. So even with the barn, I'm, I'm already more than full. I'm above capacity. So that car needed to go because I'd know to keep it safely, not without paying constantly more money for it. So those are kind of the reasons for keeping it and not keeping it. And ultimately the reasons for not keeping it do quite heavily outweigh. Now I'm seeing it turn up on Facebook quite a lot because I'm you know, friends with a new owner and um, he's putting it on Facebook and he's got a garage for it. He's going to be using it at shows. He's going to take it to lots of shows throughout the year. It's probably going to be at the NEC and the motorist shows that we're going to. So we will absolutely be seeing that car a fair amount over the coming, well, this summer at least, and hopefully the next summer as well. So we know it's gone to a good home. We know it's going to get seen. Probably it's a good thing in terms of getting people seeing that car because more people will see it. Now, he is taking it to shows than I would have done because I probably wouldn't have taken it to many shows because being a convertible, the boot isn't very big. I wouldn't have loaded much stuff into it, so I wouldn't have taken it. It would always be the last choice to come to a show, so hardly anyone would see it unless it was a show that was literally down the road from here. So from that point of view, it's going to get more, more exposure apart from online. But ultimately... As I've said when I was buying the Crown Victoria, I buy cars on this channel because I want those cars either in my life because it's a car I've wanted a long time, like the Crown Victoria or the 200 VI, or because it's a car I think is really fun, like the Volvo 740, which I wasn't planning on buying, but absolutely love that car, or it's Freelander, which is becoming very endearing indeed. I'm quite enjoying having this thing um, knocking around the place. Well, the other situation with Quentin was that the car needed saving. I didn't want to see that car get broken for parts because that is what was going to happen if I hadn't bought it. So I'm glad I saved it. I'm really happy to have taken that car back from the brink and you got to enjoy the ride. If your YouTube channel is purely for the clicks, then maybe you would hang on to those cars and keep them in the background. So there's always a tantalizing possibility that people might see it get driven in a video. But I think then you're just doing it for the clicks at that point and you're being a bit disingenuous. Whereas I've always been completely upfront. I'm not a big fan of convertibles, but I am a big fan of Rover R8s. So I wanted to save that car so that someone else can enjoy it. And so it's saved, not so that I can have it on my drive. I did drive it with the roof down a couple of times. It's all right, but it's not something I'd put the effort into having a car here on the drive for particularly. Maybe a two-seater like an MGF or an MX-5 or Alpha Spider, something like that. But then that is properly a two-seater sports car. But even then, when I saw that little MGF 
down at Stone Cold with like 5,000 miles on it. That had the hardtop on it, and I thought that looked so much nicer than the softtop MGF, so if I was going to buy one, I'd just go and buy the hardtop and not have a convertible anyway. And of course, there's a financial aspect I touched on at the beginning. There's a lot of money tied up in that car. So selling that means I've got some money back in the bank that I can go and put into the other projects. 200 VI is going to take a bit of cash, skimming the head, replacing all the, the major service items that need to go back in with the new head. Crown Vic needs MOT and the electrics still sorting out. Um, yeah, there's lots of other projects needing lots of other money. So even if I don't put that straight back into another new car, because, hey, we've got another new car just here, uh, that... that cash will come in handy for keeping the other ones going and as I say I'd run out of jobs to do on that car so it was just hanging around for the sake of it and I can't have cars doing that they need to be either a car I want to be driving or a car that is going to make good interesting videos while I fix it so that car had done it done its job it had been great entertainment for everybody I'm, I know people enjoyed seeing that one come that was phoenix from the flames coming back from the brink but now that's done it's off with its new owner now, so yeah, we can all be happy, and Quentin can be happy, the new owner can be happy. I think you guys can be happy as well, knowing that it's in safe hands. But I do wonder if other bigger channels, though, get rid of their cars more quietly. Car throttle, they get through an awful lot of cars, and you wonder what happens to all of them. Do they sell them quietly, just in, shuffle them away? Do they um, hang on to them in a big hangar somewhere? Is there a field full of car throttle cars or Marty Car Mods cars somewhere out in the outback of Australia? Well, at least they won't rust in, in the, the outback. They'll just uh, get dusty and full of dangerous spiders. Um, whereas here, if I'm done with the car and I park it outside somewhere, it's just going to rust. So better to move it on. Well, Roadkill, for example, in America, they've got surprisingly few actual project cars considering how long that channel's been going on for. Like 10 seasons, I think they're up to now. And they've done a lot of road trips and they've done a few sort of one-time just use it and flip it kind of videos. But their core main cars isn't really that many but they all live in an outside lot outside um, the publishing house and so whenever they have to go back and recommission the car it's an absolute wreck and they're pretty much starting again so I kind of think as the, the goal of my channel is more restoration and getting cars back that would be counterproductive if I was to go and do that if I just kept it and let it rot again and had to re-restore it again that would be silly so anyway that's just a few thoughts with a cup of tea Maybe the next video will be tea or coffee, the great debate, and dunk or not dunk. Big important questions for our time. Yeah, and also someone suggested talking about Audible, so yeah, I think I'll have a chat about that as well. So stay tuned. Any other topics of conversation you'd like me to waffle through, then yeah, let me know, and we'll, I'm sure, make time for it <laughs> in the near future. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon on either this or the main channel.